I'm Piers Linney and this is Ask Piers. This is where I take some time out to answer your questions about starting a business or scaling a business. And if I don't know the answer, I don't have all the answers, I'll find somebody who does. If you want to ask a question, please ask on Twitter or on LinkedIn, hashtag Ask Piers. This is a question from Kenna. You have previously invested in food and drink based businesses and helped them to become successful. However, if you were to start your own food and drink startup, what would it be and what are the key activities you would do to make it a success? Hashtag Ask Peers. So Kenny, you're right. I've been involved in several food and drinks businesses. I have to admit, I haven't made a huge amount of money out of any of them yet. One of them is uh, five years in, the founder, very determined lady that I met on Dragon's Den. She's now in her second iteration of the business plan and through sheer grit, she's about to relaunch her product. So I'm still involved in food and drink. I'm also very excited about wellness and nutrition is a big part of that. The food and drink market is large, it's dynamic, we're seeing a lot of change and there's pretty low barriers to entry in terms of getting into the market. But succeeding and getting through the startup phase and scaling your business can be very, very difficult. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Have a look at my video with Reducine. It's a startup, three siblings, and I went down to Liverpool in the UK to meet them with a food and drink specialist. And we went through how they should focus their startup on the local market and become local sort of entrepreneurial heroes and build that market before scaling out of Liverpool. Now the food and drink market is a hard one to crack but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And I'm sure you're aware, we're all aware, wherever you are in the world, of success stories, be it protein-based nutrition, this healthy ice cream. In the UK, I saw a new brand of uh, healthy frozen food. And the point is, the large food manufacturers had it too good for too long. They produced low-fat products for many years, which were high in sugar. And people are beginning to realise that your well-being, your wellness, is about what goes in here. That's where it starts. It is about you know, moving more clearly. But it's also about eating less in some cases, but fundamentally eating well. And that's where the entrepreneur can disrupt the large players. And that's what you're seeing more and more of. So to keep this video short, I've got six tips for the food and drink entrepreneur. Number one, passion, market, skill. Food and drink, a lot of these businesses you see that are succeeding, they start with a passion, a real understanding, maybe a technical understanding, but you need passion, you need a market, you need skill. So if you've got passion and a market, but no skill, or you don't go and find the skill or recruit the skill, you're probably going to fail. If you've got passion and skill, but there's no market, that's a hobby and so on. So a lot of the businesses I see out there that are succeeding are the founders are absolutely passionate about what they're doing. They're passionate about how their product will add value to somebody's life make them healthier or make them feel better about themselves. Number two, read my article about do your research. Competitive landscape, production, minimum order quantities, the cost of making your product, the cost of going to market, advertising. It can be very, very complicated. Regulation, the list goes on. Do your homework, otherwise you're gonna find yourselves getting into a sticky situations. Any food and drink startup I've ever been involved in or, or, or observed has run into walls, production cost walls, minimum order quantities, regulatory walls. They're, they're, it can be extremely complex producing a product that somebody has to consume and to get it right. Um, shelf lives can be a huge problem. Getting your ingredients right, so yes, they're healthy, but also they have that shelf life and it works for retailers. They're not new walls, they've been there for decades and lots of other food and drink startups have run into them. So do your homework, bring people on board that have done it before, or find a mentor, or go and talk to other food and drink entrepreneurs. They're usually quite happy to impart their experience and do your research. Number three, start small. Don't try and start up and scale up very, very quickly. You have to get your product right, and it can take a lot of time to build an audience, um, get the feedback, perfect your product, uh, secure a market or build an online presence before you can even get into retailers, for example, so you can really grow that business. Start small and iterate. Get your product right, your team right, your production right, your go-to-market right. Don't be in a rush, because if you're in a rush, you're gonna find the wheels fall off. Number four, build an audience, build a customer base. 
find fans. It doesn't matter how small, that's where you should start. You can't just expect to be a household brand within 12 months. This could take you five years or even a decade in some cases. Start in your local community, build a presence online, create content, focus on social media, build that fan base, and again, use that to get feedback to perfect your product. Retailers don't want to agree to a listing and then the entrepreneur just hopes that having something sitting on a shelf will sell. That's not how it works. They want you to support it, they want you to advertise, they want you to do PR, they want you to see a backstory, they want to see you build a social media presence. It all helps you get into stores but also stay in them. Number five, you need to understand retail and merchandising and if you don't, find somebody that does. Number six, I've mentioned this in other points but iterate your product. Get it out there, get feedback and change. Don't just have one view how your product should be. Listen to your customers, listen to retailers, take the feedback, absorb it and build it into your product. Number seven, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It will take you three, five years to get going and maybe 10 years to really build a presence. So I hope that was useful. I hope Kenna found it useful. If so, please like this video and subscribe.